Okay, welcome to my yummy tier list. As everybody wants basically to... Everybody and their mother wants to create their own tier list. I also find it quite fun and I, I also want to make my, my own personal tier list. It's, it's very... It's, it, I mean, it's just my opinion, right? Like, like basically every, every tier list this is very subjective. But my goal for this is actually to not make a meta playlist of some a meta tier list of some sort, but really just a comfort tier list. So, so which characters do I find comfortable to play? I think I'm gonna do that for. I'm gonna do three separate tier lists for that. Like one for for PC. One for mobile and one for consoles, because I think that there are just some some things which are very uncomfortable, uh, or, or some game mechanics which are very uncomfortable playing on mobile. For example, like the, the most prominent example would probably be archers, like everything where you have to charge attack or have very complicated combos like N three C combos. Where you have to switch attacks a lot, especially on mobile, since you're missing the the completely haptic feedback of buttons there. Like those are probably better on a controller, but on controllers you have a different issue. For example, I mean you only have one right thumb, right? So if you have to press, let's say, on PlayStation Square and triangle at the same time or you have to jump and hit at the same time, that won't work, right? So, so this actually brought me to the idea that it might make sense for some people who don't really care about meta, but they really want to just have means to comfortably, maybe, maybe, maybe not 36 star the abyss, but at least come close to that, or at least beat most of the content in the game without having much of a hassle and without being sweaty too much. So first of all, I'm gonna rename those tiers, I guess. There, there's already a tier list that I made on Hoyo Lab, which some people actually liked. Kind of sweaty. Sweaty. And impossible. So these are basically the tiers that, I, that I'm going to, to fill out. And I, I want to stress that this is completely, completely subjective. Let me, let me have a look here. I already prepared that, of course. But but yeah, I will I will make this on the fly and also give my reasoning why I think that certain characters are more comfortable to play or less comfortable to play. I, I'm probably gonna elaborate this to oh that. Oh, that's that's very nice, bot. Thanks. No, I'm not interested. Basically, <laughs> I'm just recording here for YouTube. But I always wanted to set up a multi-stream scenario, and I didn't. I I I will just try that out. So, yeah. Um. Let Let's just let's just hop into that maybe. So uh, this is state 4.1, so we won't have uh, the Hydro Archon in there, and also no Navia in there, which is fine because nobody knows about them, like even the Dreamers don't know about them, although we have some leaks already, I, I won't care about that, and I will just make a tier list like, like how I perceive those characters and 
I also don't own all of them, right? I, I don't have every single five star in the game. Um, but from what I have seen on YouTube and from other content creators, I can kind of assume at least which of them are quite comfortable to play. Right? So I will just go in order as I see them, right? Okay, let's start off with the with the traveler. I think it's it's kind of hard to, to put the traveler somewhere. Because there are so many of them, like the Geo Traveler is probably easy easy to play, but there are not many teams which are really that really can utilize it, him or her. So I'm 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 gonna for, go for the middle ground here. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that uh, to, to utilize it really well, like to easily beat all the content in the game, it is kind of sweaty also on mobile and controller i think um especially with the new hydro mc i mean, i i i think it's just it's just kind of sweaty right to be good with him uh, i i guess uh dendro mc can go up here or he's maybe even uh, a comfort plus but but yeah, like all over, I'm just going for the middle ground because there are so many different MCs and they're they're kind of kind of different. For example, I think uh, Animo MC might be down here because playing that on mobile is <laughs> pretty bad. Um, so, so let's go to our first limited five star, which is Albedo. I think that Albedo easily easily goes to the comfort plus tier. Because it's just so easy to play. Like, you don't have to push buttons with him. You don't have to refresh his skill a lot because it has a very long duration. And you can ca ca cast it on cooldown. It has a wide area. And basically it adds just geo damage to every character it sends in his circle. I mean, it's circle impact, but but yeah. It's, it's just very, very easy to utilize him. Well, next off is Amber, which... Usually, usually <laughs> has her own tier. I guess she's she is kind of kind of okayish in some scenarios, and you can utilize her well with with LG of the end or something like that, especially in Hutao teams. Um, but also, as she is an archer, I don't really think that she's very comfortable to play, especially on mobile. Like even if you if you have that uh, gyro, that gyro aiming. I think it's 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 still uh, kind of awkward, right? Especially for Amber, like even if you have constellations for her, you still need to throw her skill and then shoot the bunnies. And so you really have to aim at the bunnies, and I just, I, I, I just don't think she's very comfortable to play. I, I think she's, she's actually at least sweaty. And I would even go beyond and say that that she's just impossible to play and impossible to, to perfectly utilize. So Ayaka, Ayaka, hmm. Actually, I, I I played. I I'm usually a PC player, but I also had to play sometimes on mobile. So my experience with playing Ayaka there was was mixed. But but actually, I find it kind of easy. I mean, you have to on mobile. You have to switch buttons. You have to switch with your thumb. So you have to da or depends on where your dash button is. I think for me the I put the dash on R1, um, on the shoulder button. And this is basically all you need her to infuse. So if you're playing something like what, what, what I typically play for comfort in that scenario is Yelan and Ayaka. So I th actually think that Ayaka is pretty easy to play. Like... You, you don't need much. Basically, if you play her in a freeze team, then she's pretty comfortable. Um, number next is Barbara. 
I think that catalysts kind of help because you can basically just auto attack spam or charge attack spam and you will, will you will will get some application out of that. Also she's pretty good for comfort as she's a team wide healer. Uh, she has good hydro application also with her skill. The main issue with that is basically the cooldown. So I guess um it's it's also it's an easy easy for me. Um Beidou. So so Beidou, I think she she's very strong and she gives interruption resistance and a shield and uh, against two or more enemies, she's pretty strong. But to be fair, the whole counter mechanic it, it, it's fun. It's fun, I get it. Um, but it doesn't play too comfortably. You really have to you really have to watch out for when the enemy attacks and you have to counter that. So I I'm I'm I think I'm I'm have to put her in sweaty or kinda sweaty. Um I'm not sure. But I think she's she's just She's great. I like her I like her a lot. She was one of my first characters. But I think She's sweaty. She she's super reliant on her burst, and you have to to fill that. So you basically have to hit many enemies to generate enough particles, depending on the team. And you also have yeah, yeah. I I think I think Beto Beto deserves a, a placing in the in the sweaty spot. Bennett Bennett is <laughs> to be fair. Bennett doesn't need a lot. Basically, you're just spamming his skill until his burst is ready. And after his burst is ready, you basically just stomp everything in the game, no matter what your team is, because of that insane attack buff that he provides. So I... I actually, I actually think that he's pretty easy to utilize and pretty easy to master, no matter on what platform you're playing him on. I would, I would actually say that that Bennett might be, it might be a comfort plus unit because he's just so insane that you don't need much skill to utilize him well. Jongyun. Well, actually, when when I first thought about this tier list, I actually wanted to say that he's kind of sweaty, but I don't think so, because basically all you have to do is drop down his his field, and then you have cryo infusion for for your active character. Which is actually actually kind of nice because then you can also just normal attack spam or charge attack spam, and um, you will have a lot of cryo application there. Uh, besides from that, you will never really utilize Shang Yun by himself. I mean, I mean you can with Ben and C six, for example. You can do melt, um, but usually you're just dropping down that. Um, that skill, and then cast his burst after you had some pyro application to do create some big nuke melts. So I would actually put him in easy tier for now. Dialogue, our oh man, my first, my first C six character, my first five star C six character that I owned. Um, I never used him. Why? It's it's kind of unfair. I mean, I have him on C6 and <laughs> with level 40, using this lux luxurious Sea Lord. And yeah, well, what can I say? I, I mean, it, it's kind of hard to util to utilize him really, like to an extent where he can actually compete with Hu Tao or the likes, or with basically. Any character with C6 Bennett? So I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't. 
Actually, I, I think it, he's kind of fun, at least playing on PC. I, I think his rotation is kind of fun. Uh, C0 or C6 doesn't really matter. You just have to be quicker with C6. I think that I'd still put him in kind of sweaty. Because, like, to f utilize him to the max, you probably have to Dragon Strike, and this is, like, almost impossible on on mobile. For controller, I think he's kind of fun, and he might be easy. Um, but all over, to get everything out of him, you have to time your burst correctly. You have... You have a skill, and then you have normal attack, and skill, and normal attack, skill, and normal attack, which is also, in my opinion, pretty horrible on mobile. So, um, um, I'm actually tend towards... He's sweaty. He's the, he, I, I, th I, think, I think playing D-Look is, compared to others, he's just sweaty. Or kind of sweaty. I don't know, I, I think he's sweaty. For Diona, I think there's not much to say. I mean, it's it's a, it's a comfort unit in herself because she's a shielder and a healer. Uh, you have to play a circle impact, which is for me also kind of kind of hard, at least mobile. I don't know. I I personally don't don't like staying in in small circles so much, especially playing on mobile. So I guess. Despite all the comfort that Diona gives us, I certainly cannot put her in comfort plus tier. I could maybe see her in the easy tier. B because you, you will never use her charged attack, really, which is like my absolute no-go for mobile. So I think... Just because of the alt being, being circle impact, I'm probably putting her in kind of sweaty. Also, also <coughs> for her shield, it's actually important that you that you hold your charge attack, uh, hold your hold your skill. So that that's that makes her harder to play. Actually, it's not not just fire and forget. I mean, Zhongli has the, has the same thing. He also has to has to press, but then again, uh, Zhongli's shield is way bigger. And the owners, right? So even if if you manage to hold his skill, then you don't have to refresh it that often. And also, you you have basically a hundred percent uptime on only shield. Instead, like with the owner, you also have uptime issues, right? So so that makes your rotations just just more complicated. So I, I would just put her in kind of sweaty. Okay, Fischl. Our girl. Super hyped since Sumeru. And I get it. For me, that, that's an easy comfort last year. Like, basically all summons. Like, like basically all summons. Uh, because you just have to put it down, and then us does its thing. Her main damage comes from Oz and her A4 passive. So... Oh, oh so, sorry. The A, A, A1 passive, I guess it is. Like, whenever you trigger an electro-related reaction, then, then she will just automatically deal damage. She can be fully off-field. Um, it, it's, it's an easy comfort plus unit for me. Ganyu. And now that that strongly depends on whether you play her on PC or controller or mobile. Because I think she's a pretty comfortable unit. Maybe maybe she's she's easy on uh on PC, so if you're playing with mouse and keyboard. But then again, archers are horrible on mobile, right? So that already makes her kinda kinda sweaty. Although her to her burst is awesome. Because you don't have to do anything and if you're able to group up the enemies then you the good quadratic scaling will just deal with the enemies. So so that's pretty comfortable if you play her as a sub DPS. 
But if you play her also in Mel teams with Shangling right now, it's it's basically horrible because you have to basically go in melee range to play her, and that's I, I don't I don't know, man. Like everyone that I talk to, or everyone that I know, they they like Ganyu, but. They don't really like playing her as a main DPS, especially on controller and also on mobile. So I would, I would maybe put her in the kind of sweaty tier because of her alt. She might be here, but then again, since she's uh, an archer, and if you really want to play her as a main DPS, I think she has to go into into the, the sweaty tier but then again she's super strong so if you if you can really make her charge attacks work you don't have much issue clearing content because she's just so strong but i think i'm gonna put her in the sweaty tier so hu tao hu tao is one of the strongest dps's we have in the game right now especially with her like like teams like Double Hydro. So that in itself is worth a lot. Because you just have... You don't have to press so many buttons. If the enemies are dead. Right? But then again... To utilize her fully... Like if you just don't want to spam normal attacks. You basically have an N1 Seek. Um, attack combo. And you also have to dash cancel. Except if you're at C1. Uh, you have to jump cancel, and with C1 you can dash cancel. Um, so all over, I guess <sighs> she does not qualify for the for the easy easy list. I I think um, because she's so strong, she's not sweaty because she deals just so much damage. But she's definitely not easy to play, especially on controller or mobile. Hmm. So yeah, like Jean also is a team wide heal. Um so that actually makes her a comfort unit in herself. You have Vivi Shred with great support. You can play her basically with just taps and ultimates, which also makes her pretty easy, I guess. Uh, if you wanna utilize her to the fullest though. Like, if you wanna wanna abuse falling damage, and you have to hold, and you have to aim, then she drops way lower in that list. Then then she really... It, uh, for, for, for me, I'd say she's impossible then. But then again, Jean was my very first unit. I played a lot with Jean. She carried me through the whole game. She basically was my monster starter unit. Um, so... I think... As you can really just play her by tapping and using her ultimate. And she also has things like Sunfire going for her. Which is also a super easy way actually to, to apply Pyro to the enemy with Bennett. I'm gonna put her into the easy tier. Next boy, balls. Hey, uh... So with K, I think he's an amazing unit. Because you don't have to utilize complicated combos with him. It's, it's basically just spam your skill, and if your ult is ready, then, then use burst. So I actually think that K is quite comfortable to play. You can easily use him in quick swap. It doesn't really matter where you put him in the rotation. It's it's not complicated to play either on mobile nor on controller, so I'm gonna I'm I'm just gonna put him in the easy tier. Kaching. Kaching I mean she uh, since the release of Dendro she's quite strong. Um so which puts her above actually. Uh her ultimate is really just point blank. And you can also Double tap her skill, so that's not too complicated. If you want to utilize her skill in a better way, much like maybe maybe I'll hate him. Um, 
then then she gets complicated, especially I think on on mobile and controller. So I'm I'm not quite sure where to put her, but I think either she's easy to play. I, I would say she's kind of easy to play, especially in like aggravate teams. She self infuses just by tapping her skill. Uh, and that's that's kind of cool, but. Since you probably have to aim her skill, I would I would just say she's also kind of sweaty. Like, she's above all those. And she's not as sweaty as Hu Tao. So I'm gonna put her here. Klee. Yeah, well, well Klee is a Catalyst user, so that's that's something good. I, I guess. But then again, she's... First of all, she's a chibi. So, and those chibis... They're slow. Right? So, it's it's not that easy to dodge with her. It's also... It's just not easy to, to move around the battlefield with her. She also does... As a catalyst, she probably needs something like a... And to see combo, which is not the greatest, in my opinion, for mobile. But then again, you can basically just normal spam, and she will kind of work out. She won't be perfectly utilized that way, but but I, I mean, she she could go in in either of those tiers. I think. I think she's. With Venti, for example, she might even be Comfort Plus, um, because it's just like for the overworld, just so insane. You can just black hole all the enemies and then just throw your jumpy jumpies in there, and everything will basically die. Um, so I think I'm, I'm gonna put her in the, the although she feels kind of clunky. And you just have delays in her animations, and that makes it kind of hard. But I think I think she's pretty easy to play. Not as easy as Kaya or Chong Yoon, so I, I'm gonna gonna put her in the bottom of easy tier for now. Lisa, same thing. It's she's a catalyst user, so so that's that's fine. It puts her above her her burst has a quite long duration, it's completely off-field. For other application, I mean, you, you could uh, hold her, her skill to have a large AoE. Um, but then again, um, she's, she's a budget aggravate unit, maybe, so... I... Just like with many Catalyst users, I think that she is pretty easy to play. Uh, oh, yeah, Lumine is basically just like Ether. Mona. Uh, Mona, also a Catalyst user, so, so my first impression for that is always easy tier, because you have so easy hard replication. Also with her, with her skill, you have a little bit of off-field hard replication. Uh, her alt, her burst is, is kind of kind of strong, and for many speedrun teams, you also need that. Her ch her her dash is is actually pretty cool. Ah, uh, I'm not sure actually what to make. Out of them. I I think I think just because she's a catalyst union, she's she's quite easy to play. I mean, the optimal team rotation might be might be kind of sweaty, but uh, for now I'm gonna gonna just put actually most of the catalyst users because they have so easy application. And I I mean, if you're not caring about efficiency but really comfort to play 
you could just throw in a Shanling or some Pyro application and even vape with Mo with damage Mona and have a DPS Mona. Right? There there are a lot of good hydro options and she's not necessary, but I think she's pretty comfortable to play. Ningguang. Hmm. Yeah. So Ningguang is also a catalyst user, but I don't think that she's actually easy to play if you're not just playing her as a sub DPS for her burst. Because if you're playing uh, Ningguang as an on-fielder, as an on-field Geo damage, first off, right now the Geo reactions are basically trash. I, I mean, you crystallize does give you a shield. It's fine, but damage-wise, it's just bad. So, um, if you really want to utilize her, you have limited team options. Basically, I mean, you will most likely play her with Zhongli, so that team will be kind of comfortable, but that's not really due to Ningguang, it's due to Zhongli. Um, and if you want to utilize her the best, you have to use the normal attacks, you have to use your charge attacks, you basically also have to step cancel her normal attacks, or like press forward or walk forward, which is even worse on mobile during your attack so that your normal attacks will be faster. I actually think that she's one of the worst units to play on on mobile. So I'm I'm gonna put her at the sweaty tier, I think at the at the bottom of sweat sweaty tier. Noel Well there's this not much to say about Noelle, actually. I think she's one of the most comfortable units in the game. Because you're basically unkillable. It's She, she can be a very good GU on-field DPS. You have, uh, on high constellations, you have a shield that automatically procs. Like, the worst thing about Noelle is probably Dragon Strikes. Which you don't need because you can also just pop the burst and then just attack, like normal attack away, and she will do fine or use charge attack to spin to win. I actually think that Noelle is one. It, she's at least easy. She's at least easy to play. If not a, a pretty, pretty high comfort unit. Because you don't even have to cast your your shield yourself if you have her on high constellation. So I'm probably gonna put her in the comfort plus. Chi Chi. So no, Chi Chi. She's a pretty good healer, and for if you die a lot and you have her at C six, she does revive your team, which is. Which is kind of nice, and she's a pretty good healer in co-op. Um, but personally, I don't think that she's super comfortable. I mean, she, she she's easy, basically, like most of the healers. And that's that's why I'm also putting her in the easy tier. She's she's just she's easy to play, and she's pretty comfortable, especially if you don't have better healers. But I think she's. She's rather going somewhere at the bottom of the easy tier. So Razor, my boy Razor. I made Bazer, uh, I made Razor for a very long time. He he was my favorite unit when I started out. And really really depends on how you play him. Like if if you play him with Chengcho He's super easy because you can, after you ult, you can basically normal attack spam. So I don't think that he's super hard to play. You have to weave in skills at some times. So I, I think you have to alternate between the attack button and, and the skill button somehow. And this might be kind of stressful. Uh, 
Um, so I think if if I have Kiching and Hutao in this tier, then then Razor also has to go in that tier somewhere. And as he's a, he has a harder time to to clear content because he's just not as strong as Kiching and Hutao in their best teams. So I think I will put him in a kind of sweaty. Sucrose. So when I started, I I also thought that Sucrose is grouping is actually kind of sweaty because the area is not that large especially if you don't have constellations for her you only have one skill so i i was about to put her in the kind of sweaty tier uh, but someone caught me out on that and and said that Su sucrose is super easy to play and actually i have to admit that's true like if you think about Sucrose streams that have Xingqiu, Yelan, or, or the likes. You can basically just spam your normal attacks, weave a skill in or an, a burst in from time to time, but basically you will deal horrendous amounts of damage just by spamming her normal attack. So I think she will she will actually go into the easy tier and and she will be far up top i think she's she's easier to utilize than barbara child okay yeah well child he has insane damage potential it's kind of hard to to utilize him at his best with riptide because you also have to group enemies for that i think and what threw me off the most for child is actually his uh, his weapon swapping uh because i didn't uh, develop a feeling for when he his weapon is is going to stop so or when 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 his skill is going to stop if i could switch that really it would be different i guess and some might disagree but i think that there's more to child than just spamming his normal attacks. So I also think that, unfortunately, he's kind of sweaty. Venti, there's not much to say, really. I mean, where, where he does work, he completely obliterates everything. So I'd say he, it's, it's an easy, easy comfort plus unit. Uh, Shangling. She has a summon, so though that's 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 good. It's easy to play already. So I'd say um also her paranado lasts for a pretty long time, especially if you have her at C4. The worst thing about her is actually to get enough energy recharge that you can really burst off cooldown and stuff like that. But other than that, I think she's pretty easy and forgiving because you can put down Guaba and you will have already some application uh, without any further needs of anything. So I, I think I'm going to put her in the easy tier. Ciao. Ciao's energy management and his, his HP management is, is can, kinda hard. And you always have to jump and plunge, which is already on mobile. You have to alternate between two quote unquote buttons. So I I I don't think that he's very easy to play. I mean it's it's just basically that one gimmick that that he has. But you also have the dash skills. So I don't know man. I, I think he's kinda sweaty. Maybe not as sweaty as Hu Tao, but he is definitely around around the kinda sweaty. Um, so I, I'd personally group Xingqiu and Gelan together because they're essentially the same unit somehow. I think that actually Xingqiu offers more, more comfort because of the, the super armor that he provides. Um, and you don't have to react as fast 
if, if you're playing Yelan, you you probably have to have to run around. You know? that that might might also be harder on on mobile. So I think I would actually put Chingcho in the in the Comfort Plus tier and Yelan in the Easy tier. Something like that. Xinyang. Okay, well, to utilize her, I mean, it's basically spin to win. But uh, from what, what I saw until now, I think her rotations are just kind of kind of weird. Like, you can play her in Mono Paro and she will do fine there, I think. She also has a shield. Um... But personally, especially for mobile, I don't, I don't think that I value this charge attack too much. I think I'm gonna put daring sweaty. Uh, although, yeah, let's just put it there. Zhang Li, Geo Daddy himself, has not much to say, I guess. Uh, the, the the comfort that Zhongli provides just by making your whole team invincible and also paralyzing all the enemies is just invaluable. So I, I would really like for me Zhongli is the number one comfort unit in the game. Rosaria. Actually I wanted to put her in the comfort plus at first, because you don't have to press very many buttons to make her actually work. Um, but I don't think that she provides the same kind of comfort that others do in that tier, so I probably put her... She, I, I think she's easy to play, you don't have to press many buttons. Uh, Eula? Has high damage output, just basically needs a lot of normal attacks, uh, sometimes a skill and an alt. So I, I, I think Eula is actually also pretty easy to play. Yanfei, Catalyst user, which relies on her charge attacks a lot. Um, with high constellations, you don't have as high stamina consumption, so she gets better. I'd probably put her somewhere around Klee. Klee has, I think, just way better AoE, but I think Yanfei might be might have an easier time to um, vaporize. I, I I think I think for me those two are pretty interchangeable. Kazuha. Well, again, the only thing you need for Kazuha to work is basically tap his skill and plunge. Then, so this this is two buttons. You can, of course, you can also use the alt, and you have a little bit more off field swirl, off field spells, which is nice. Um, but the only thing that you really need, and the speed you can you can group enemies, is just is just invaluable. Uh, and also for exploration, he's pretty cool. So I think that he's somewhere around Venti. Maybe for mobile, I would put him a, a little less than Venti. Uh, but then again, I think just that the core team of something, Swirlable and Kazuha is just so comfortable, I have to put him up here. Yumiya. Yeah. What can I say? It's spam normal attacks, right? So skill and spam normal attacks, as long as you have a shield. And something like Xing Chou Yelan. She's just super easy to play. I think she's easier to play than uh than even Ayaka. Sayu. Yeah. Okay. So Sayo has to go uh, somewhere at the bottom here, because if you really want to use it, utilize her in the fight, besides of her burst, if you really want to swell, 
you basically have to circle the enemy uh, while rolling, and I, I, I think it's, it's just impossible, at least for, for mobile players. Where is this? Raiden Shogun. I think Raiden Shogun is an easy, easy for me. Because first off, you basically just can use her as, a, as an e-bot, right? For, with the current Hyperbloom teams, you only switch to her and press exactly one button and that's all she does. But even if you play her in uh, Raiden National or Raiden Double Hydro, in any Raiden Hyper Carry team, it's basically you tap her, her burst and then you have... Uh, and, and and one C and three C. I'm I'm actually not quite sure about that. Um, to play optimally, but then again, she infuses herself with the electro, and then you could normal attack spam. So I I, I think Raiden is pretty easy. Good to Sarah. She's an archer. She's only there for buffing, right? So actually, she's quite easy. But then again, her field is not as huge as Bennett's. Uh, she's very specialized. I don't think she's very hard to play, um, but if you compare her to other units here, I think that she's actually kind of sweaty because you also have to run over that very small patch that she does. Um, so I have to put her in kind of sweaty. Kokomi. No. Oh. Well, I, I think the, the Abyss usage rates, they speak for themselves. So I think oh, Kokomi is a very easy, very easy comfort plus unit. And I would, like comfort wise, I would put her right above Obedo here. Aloy. She's actually, she's actually quite okay. Uh, but then again, if you really want to utilize her skill, for example, um, and you have to collect those ice orbs that she that that that, that she creates, you also have to to kind of collect them with either Venti or Kazuha, and then you can ult. And she is also a bow user, so I just like many bow users, I would put her into at least kind of sweaty. Yeah. Toma. Easy as it gets. Like, you have a shield on his skill. Uh, even more shields on his burst. And a little bit of pyro application. The hardest thing is to actually use him in a burden team. Which is also the only thing that you really use him for. But then again, I, 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 I'm, he might be hard to build. But I think she's fairly easy to use. Arataki Ito is a character that I don't own personally, so I don't really know. And actually, I never got that unit. I, I just don't know how to play him effectively. Um, I mean, he has a taunt. And he has pretty huge AoE geo damage when you're just charge attacking, which is fine, I guess. But for me, it never he never really felt good, so that's why I'm putting him in the kind of sweaty sweaty tier. I some somewhere around Razor or Child. With Goro, he's actually easy to play. Not much to say there. I'm gonna put him here. The bottom. Easy tier. Chanhe, for me, is actually much like Goro. She doesn't need, she's not very complicated to play. I think she's pretty easy to play. Yunjin is a bit harder just because she's just so hard. Hard to build, in my opinion, um, because you need so much defense, you need so much energy recharge to actually make her work. No, um, 
And you also need crit if you have Favonius lands. So I don't. Uh, she, she is pretty easy as she also generates no no she doesn't generate a shield but at least she she got interruption resistance while she's charging her skill <sighs> but yeah as a as a your support i would say she's still still quite easy to uh yeah miko so with most summons i just have to put Yaimiko on the Comfort Plus tier. Because you can only, you can, you can just spam her skill three times and then it attacks automatically, right? And you switch her back in, cast your burst, and then press the same button again. You never basically have to use her normal charge attacks. You can, though, and especially in aggravate teams or something like that. But summons are easy comfort for me. Ayato. So, Ayato is actually one of the few main DPSs that I would actually put in Comfort Plus tier because he's just so easy to play. It's just cast his burst, cast a skill once, and then you don't even have to tap the auto attack button. You just hold down the attack button and he will just do his thing. Right? If you. If you play something like Ayato Hyper Bloom, then most of your fights you don't even have to move. You cast Zongli Shield, you cast your Nahida skill, you put your Raiden uh, E on, <laughs> and then do the Ayato skill and just press down left mouse button or attack button, and he will do deal all of his damage. I, I think actually that he's one of the most comfortable units to play in the whole game. Kukishinobu. Same thing also maybe because of Ayato, I would say. Um she's the maybe maybe the second best Hyper Bloom triggerer and all you need for her to work is her skill. So you just swap her in, do the skill, swap out. That's it. And she will deal insane amounts of damage. So, I I I think I'm gonna gonna rearrange that maybe a bit. This. Hey, so kind of sweaty to be honest. Kind of sweaty. Feels kind of sweaty. I tried to build him, but you always have to look out. You have to spam your normal attacks until you your skill is strong enough so you can one punch things. And you basically, I think the ideal rotation also uses charges attack, charge attacks. I I don't just don't think that if you really wanna wanna stump with Hazo, it's it's harder. So I put him in a kind of sweaty. Tinari. I I love Tinari. Really, I I like I like to play him a lot. He's super fun. But I don't think that he's very comfortable to play. Like, you have to throw your skill, then you have to charge attack three times in quick succession. Which is, it's, uh, I, I mean, it's it's just kind of sweaty. I, I don't know. I, I actually think it's sweaty. And then you have to, in, he has such a small window in where you, where you actually do all of your damage. And such quick rotation that <laughs> he's just... Just sweaty, man. What what can I say? Uh, Kalei. Easy, e easy dead replication, I'd say. Although, I think that her boomerang is, is kind of weird. It's, it's hard to aim, especially if you're on mobile. So, I'd move her down actually one tier. I would say she's kind of sweaty because of that boomerang. Her ult is great. It's, I mean, it's... Again, kind of circle impact, but yeah, I, I think due to that boomerang, she's kind of sweaty. Uh, Dory. So Dory works in, in some teams, uh, and she's a healer. That's, that's already pretty great. But then again, she's so wonky, and if you want to use her in Hyperblim, you have to really utilize those tethers that, she, that she's creating. 
I, the best team that I ever saw was actually a Burgeon team with Dory and Bennett, which is kind of fun. But I, uh, yeah, I, I think she's she's sweaty. It's it's sweaty to to play her good, especially on mobile. Nilu, <laughs> yeah, well, Nilu Bloom is Nilu Bloom. You basically don't do anything. You just cast her skill three times and apply Dendro, and your screen explodes. So, uh, yeah, easy come for plus tier. Sino. I know just know. I love him. I love him very much. Super cool unit. But due to his issues with the burst and his energy requirements, stuff like that, you have to auto attack all the time. You have to time this, I think, correctly, right? During his burst. I, I, so, uh, yeah. I think he's sweaty to play. I I can't say anything different than he's he's kind of sweaty to play maybe, but I but I think he's actually it's actually sweaty to play him. Like compared to other units, like even Hu Tao is easier to play than than Sino. Candace, um. Yeah, I actually don't know where to put Candace. I I think that she's she's just not very great. To be honest, she's a shielder. She she provides some comfort. Um. Yeah, I I would put her in easy tier. Now, you know, so you have to. You don't have to, but you you can aim her skill, which is kind of a hassle, I think, on mobile. But then again, first off, you can tap her skill, which makes it much more easy to play. And I think that the value you get out of tagging enemies with her skill is so great, because you basically don't need AoE anymore. You have ranged AoE or unlimited AoE, which saves you so much of a hassle in uh, in multi-target fights that I just can put her in the Comfort Plus tier. There's no other placement. Layla, huge shield, great cryo application. I think she's super easy to use and super strong. At the same time, so I I, I put her just in, in here. Wonder Round is also kind of kind of easy to play because you you have multiple ways to play him with either spam your normal attack. She he he's a catalyst user. Sometimes needs the ult. Um, it provides some kind of. Defensive utility, I guess, that you can fly. I actually think that he he is much like Sucrose, a pretty easy easy to play unit and easy to enjoy unit. Farazan. Oh she's sweaty. You have to do a charge attack to, to pull in enemies. Uh I it's I I mean if I put Ganyu here, I have to put Farazan here as well. Yao Yao, typical summoner unit. I think she's amazing. Mm. It's a little bit more stressful, maybe, I'd say, because you have to sprint and jump in her ults, in her burst state, so that you can get the maximum healing. And that's why I don't put her in the Comfort Plus, but I definitely put her in the Easy Tier. I'll hate them. Dude, so sweaty, bro, so sweaty. And he goes directly to the top of of sweaty tier because, like ideal rotations, like you have to use a skill and plunge down. Then you have to use a few normal attacks. Then you have to count basically uh, when his mirror is gone. Then you have to charge attack. Man, I'll have him. I love him. His design is awesome. I love playing him. 
kind of buddies. Super, super sweaty. Dear. Like, after the shit talking that Dia received, I can just say, she's great. She's just great. And such a comfort unit. You get interruption resistance. You get not the greatest application, but you get application. You have a pretty easy... Well, that is auto-aiming. Uh, uh, what can I say? I, I think even on mobile, she's maybe even a comfort plus unit. As she's at least easy to play. I would, I would probably put her in the easy plus. Mika. Oof. First, I wanted to put him in an impossible tier. Because uh, you also have to... You can aim or you have to aim his skill. But... I think I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna... Put him in a sweaty... This what it here. He, I mean, he is a healer, and that deserves some recognition. But uh, when I when I play tested him, it didn't felt great to to use him. So that's that's my personal opinion. Like uh, all of this is my personal opinion, but but uh, just Mika didn't feel great. Kave, um. So Kalvi is our budget Nilo, but uh, I cannot really put him up where Nilo is because he's m actually more complicated to play in my op my opinion, but still not very hard. Depends on what constellation you have. I think if you have it at low constellations, I say that he's kind of sweaty. Because you have to charge attack. Yeah, I guess so. Why is you? Uh, easy as hell. Easy as hell. It's basically full team wide heal just on his skill. If you don't want to use him as an on fielder, I think he's uh, super easy. All the defensive utility you basically need. Easy comfort plus. Kirara actually provides a, about the same comfort value maybe than Baiju, but she didn't doesn't have healing. So I'd much like Barbara, I would probably put her in the easy tier. I think she's she's easy to play. If you don't wanna use her as a like on field character to apply Dendro and Nilo Bloom, which is again running around much like Sayu. Um, but if you just use her for the, for the shield and her burst, I think she is pretty easy to play. If not, she she actually I also think if you want to play her as a main Dendro apply, applier, I, I would also put it on here. But for her. Like, easy accessible, skill-only shield, which is unlike Sayu, for example, that he can just heal with her burst. So you have to get the burst first. With Kirara, you don't have to. You you basically can sh just switch her in and use the skill, right? Um, Linne. When I play... I, I don't own Linne, but when I play tested him... Um... Bow charge attacker, of course, with a with a huge nuke burst, which is kind of fine. Um, so, due to the massive damage that he can deal, I, I value him just like Hutao, maybe. So huge damage, but kind of awkward to play. Lynette is it's fine. She is an off-field animal applicator. I think the running is... She's an off-field animal applicator. So I think it's... It's f fair to... to rank, her, rank her somewhat high. But as you have to walk around, basically, 
I think she's she's also she's she's kinda kinda sweaty. Fremenet I value Fremenet much like Razor, to be honest. Uh his as he can work in freeze and shatter it's 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 a bit better, but I still think that he's about as good or as comfortable to play as Razor. Nivellet is super hyped at the moment. Um Due to, I'd personally put him into comfort plus or easy tier at the top of easy tier maybe, because just of how reliable his self healing is, right, and how large his AOE is. It's it's just many things. You basically just press your charged attack. You don't even have to hold it, and then you can. Really roam around. You, you have a very large AOE, and you have this self healing, so you don't even rely on on any healer. I I, it's argu arguably comfort plus, but I would put him at the top of easy. Risley, uh, on the other hand, he's a catalyst, so that instantly puts him into easy tier in my opinion, and I also think that he's pretty much. Like, he, he doesn't work really well at C0, especially with his HP issues and the charge attack healing. But still, I'd value him maybe slightly below Scaramouche. Just because I think that Scaramouche is still a bit more versatile than, than Resley is. And for Farina... And Charlotte, I cannot say anything really because they haven't been released yet. If my dreams are correct, though, <laughs> I'd probably put the Hydro Archon also up in the Comfort Plus tier somewhere around other summoners like Yamiko and Fischl. And Charlotte. Probably somewhere around other comparable healers, right? So it's basically Cryogene. She is also a catalyst, Cryo, which might help with application. So I'm going to value her actually more than a few of those. Not as much as Ayaka, maybe. But I, think, but I think she will be easy to use. But I cannot tell until I place it, tested her. But yeah, that's that's basically my take on a tier list which characters provide are just easy to play across all platforms. So yeah. Hello there. <laughs> you just came exactly right when I just finished my tier list. Um, yeah, this, this was also for a YouTube recording, so, actually, I'm, I'm, I think I'm gonna finish streaming soon. As I already said in the description, I'm not a, <laughs> it's basically like the third time that I streamed ever. I just set up my this, this whole YouTube and Twitch thing. And also made my first tier list for now. I, I, don't, I don't know <laughs> if it's any, any good. It's just my personal take on what's, what's cool to use on different platforms, really. Which, which characters I like to use, which characters are comfortable to play. And yeah, I, I hope you liked it. And for now, um, I'm actually going to be right back. Just finished my record. <laughs>